everyone. This is Jenny from Richie. After a long holiday, we back now to work. And uh, firstly, Happy New Year to you and your family. So uh, today, I'd like to introduce you our um, Richie V5. Yes, this boss is our manufacturer, and uh, uh, the you can look at look like the the cut the package just uh, look like the uh, cube boss, right? But it is. A higher configuration than Cubos. It is uh, analogic S905 chipset. Uh, it is a uh, two gigabytes DDR3 uh, RAM and the um, sixteen uh, gigabytes of storage. So the boss is two point four and five dual Wi-Fi and with the Bluetooth. Yes, this is the features of this boss. It feels very good at hand. Uh, you can see it is small size than just uh, as my size. And the uh, most fantastic feature is this one. And you can see uh, the butter. Yes, uh, this is our mo um, design, our old design for this the, or the TV boss. Then you can the touch butter. Yes, when I, when I put my finger touch it and then the boss will turn off when I touch again then it is turn off yes this the uh, this uh, light and then the light when the light bar when you turn on the two boss will show you the blue light and then let's look at this one this TF card port two USB port and the adapter this the HD cable and about this device let's look at the back this is the OTT TV box and with the old design the mark and the satisfaction about this the V5 smart TV box and then The HD cable, running remote power adapter, the UK, EU, US, AU plug or support. Now I will show you the touch button. Yes, you can see when the TV box turn on, the blue light will. Yes, well, then green. Then when I, my figure, yes, touch the butter, the TV box will power off. Okay, then when I touch again, yeah, okay, the TV box will turn on. Uh, then will show us amazing uh, our V chip uh, boot animation. Yes, this mm, design is by our manufacturer, so it's different from other TV box. Moving to the back of the device, so there you're gonna find the port for the power adapter, you're gonna find the second USB port, the network adapter port, HDMI out, AV out, and lastly the optical. And since this is related to the optical audio, I have also tried DTS sound and Dolby Digital sound with Kodi and it works very, very well. So I'm very happy to see that we get another S905X TV box that works well with DTS sound and Dolby Digital sound. As for performance, I've done the Antutu Benchmark, the Geekbench 4 and the iStorm Extreme and even though the scores aren't the highest that we've seen here on the channel, they are decent and appropriate for a TV box that has the Amlogic S905X uh, CPU. 
Connectivity wise, this TV box has Bluetooth and dual band Wi-Fi and of course I've checked the Bluetooth connectivity by connecting a gaming controller to the TV box and it does seem to work fairly good. As for the speeds that I got over the Wi-Fi connection, well, they're not the absolute best. They're much better on the 5 GHz Wi-Fi network, but on the 2.4 they're kind of slow. So you may experience some issues while um, using this connected to the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi bands. Now that you've seen how this looks on the outside and we have a better idea about its performance, I'm gonna start recording the screen, I'm gonna show you how the launcher looks, we'll play a couple of games, we'll try a couple of video files so you can have a better idea how this performs. So first of all, this is the launcher that we get to this TV box and we even have the navigation bar at the bottom of the screen. Keep in mind that if you're gonna hide the navigation bar, there is no way of actually bringing it back up. And we also have the notification tab on top right here. The TV box comes pre-installed with a whole bunch of apps including Kodi 16.1, Mob Draw, and uh, if you don't know what this is, this app basically allows you to watch movies and TV shows, however I'm not sure how legal um, that is depending on the country where you're located, and aside from that we're gonna find Netflix, the Play Store, uh, YouTube and a whole bunch of other apps. The settings app, it's fairly simple and it looks a lot like uh, the settings app that we've seen on past TV boxes. At network here you can either connect to the Wi-Fi or through a cable, it really depends on your setup at home. A display here you can change the screen resolution, keep in mind that the screen resolution will be different depending on the TV that you have connected to the box. And we do have a HDR mode um, here, but I'm gonna have it off for the duration of this video. Moving on to sounds, at sounds here you can change the sounds depending on your setup at home of course and at digital sounds here uh, you have a couple of options and for the duration of this video I'm gonna leave it set like that and moving back to the settings app, uh, at about here we can see how uh, the TV box it's called so we have the V5 uh, right there and the latest security patch is coming from August 1st 2016 for languages like most Android TV boxes, we do have a lot of languages available and I'm just gonna scroll through them so you can see the one that you may be interested in. So definitely a lot of languages are available here. And that's pretty much it for the settings app on this TV box. For those of you that are wondering, we do have root access from the factory on this um, particular device and this is the digital rights management information uh, that we have. So unfortunately we won't be able to watch Netflix in HD. Multitasking on this TV box also works pretty good, but uh, it really depends how many apps you are uh, gonna have in the background, because if you have some big games running in the background, those games may actually be closed, but for the most part, uh, multitasking works fairly good. The Google Play Store also works pretty good, so all you have to do is search for any apps that uh, you may want and install them, and I haven't had any issues uh, with any apps. However, the TV box is a bit slow, so it's not gonna be as fast as one that uh, would have the Amlogic S912. We also have Kodi 16.1 pre-installed, however, this is modified and now it's called KD Player, so it does look a bit different. Um, we can go to system here and system info and I'm just gonna show you some information that we have here. So we have about 1.2 gigs um, of free RAM uh, at this particular time. So everything uh, it's just as it looks on most uh, Android TV boxes, nothing special. Next I'm gonna show you what uh, add-ons we get. So we do have some add-ons that come pre-installed. So if we click on videos here and video add-ons. So we do have um, a few that are pre-installed. Keep in mind that if you're gonna click on get more here, the box will freeze. So yeah, don't click on this because you're gonna have to exit Kodi and uh, open it uh, once again. So that is definitely a bug. But uh, we do have some add-ons that come pre-installed. So I'm gonna find the working link and we'll uh, check out and see how well it does. So we're gonna try one of these. Let's try this one for example and let's choose a random episode from here so let's see that uh, we're gonna start this one see if it actually works so double clicking doesn't do anything let's try the next one oh it actually works so it took a second uh, or so but it started working so as you can probably tell uh, it does seem to do okay so uh, with Kodi like most TV boxes you're gonna have to like look for working streams because not all of them uh, actually work so uh, Kodi will do fine for uh, the most part, but Kodi does okay in pretty much any TV box.
since we already have Kodi opened, um, I have my USB stick plugged in and we're gonna try a couple of files here so we can see which files do okay and uh, which files don't. So we're gonna start with this one. I was playing this one um, earlier and I'm 100% sure that it works. And as you can probably tell, um, it does seem to do pretty good. And keep in mind that Dolby Digital and DTS sound also works um, very good for Kodi. The next file I'm gonna try is this one. So this one seems to do good as well. We'll move to the next file and uh, the next file it's a 4K file at 60 frames per second. We'll see how well this one does. And as you can probably tell, um, it does seem to do fairly good. Let's skip forward a bit and see what uh, actually happens. So it does uh, seem to work okay uh, for skipping forward and uh, stuff. So we'll move to the next one. This is another 4K file at uh, 50 frames per second. So just a second uh, at the beginning there, but after that uh, it seems to work okay. So we'll skip forward uh, with this one as well. And this one seems to do pretty good as well. So no issues uh, with these ones. Moving to a 720p file, I am very very sure that this one will do fine as well, so we'll skip forward. And as you can probably tell, uh, it does uh, work very smooth. We'll stop this one and we'll move to the next one, this is the next one. And uh, we're just gonna go all the way to the end. So we'll skip to the end here, and as you can probably tell, this one uh, does very good as well. So we'll stop this one, we'll move to the next one. This is uh, the next one here, and uh, as you'd expect, this one also works uh, pretty good. We'll skip forward on this one, and uh, of course it works uh, very well. The next file we have, it's another 4K file at 24 frames per second. This one was filmed with my phone maybe a year and a half ago or something like that. So this one also works uh, pretty decently. The next file that I'm gonna try is this one, however this one it's not gonna work and um, this one actually doesn't work on any TV box, so no surprise here. And the last one that I'm gonna try, it's gonna be this one right here. So let's just play the main title. And as you can probably tell, this one uh, seems to do good as well. So basically all the files that we tried on this TV box work without any issues and as I said before DTS sound and Dolby Digital sound also works very good. For the YouTube app the maximum resolution is 1080p however this may be different depending on the TV that uh, you may have connected to the TV box. So for my TV it's 1080p and uh, I'm just gonna let the video play for a couple of seconds so you can actually see how well uh, it does. So it does seem uh, fairly smooth uh, in my opinion and um, I don't see any issues with the YouTube app but keep in mind that if you're gonna actually install the YouTube app that's um, available in the Play Store well it's not gonna look that great and the maximum resolution is gonna be 720p so you're gonna have to use the built-in uh, YouTube app. I've also played the uh, Real Racing 3 on the TV box as you can probably see right now and it does seem to work uh, pretty good. Uh, I would expect that most games available in the Google Play Store uh, will work uh, decently. It's not going to be as good as um, a TV box with um, the Logic S912, however it should do fairly good for most games. And I have the traction control off and uh, all the aiding uh, whatever systems off, so that's why the car kind of spins. But um, for gaming it should uh, do okay, but uh, keep in mind that this is not uh, designed for uh, heavy gaming. So to conclude this video, if you don't like the launcher that comes pre-installed with this TV box, you can always install uh, another launcher from uh, the Play Store. There is a small issue with the Play Store uh, where the Play Store actually asks you to accept those terms of service every few times um, whenever you open the Play Store. I couldn't actually get that uh, happening whenever I was recording the screen, but every now and then uh, it actually asks you to uh, accept those terms of service uh, once again, so that uh, could be disappointing for some. But uh, overall the TV box does seem to work uh, fairly good, nothing special compared to other TV boxes with the exact same specs. 
But um, I guess uh, it does look a bit cooler with that um, LED on the front there, so you can even change colors and stuff like that. So I guess that's the main selling point um, for this TV box, uh, the way it looks, but uh, not the way it performs. Performance-wise, it is a bit slow and uh, not as fast with something that has the Logic S912, but again, the price is lower for this one uh, versus another one with uh, a more powerful CPU. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment down below, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one, thanks for watching.